Hello, and thanks for joining us for this year's Palmetto Giving Day. I'm Paula Caruso, and I am the marketing coordinator for Freedom Readers. We are honored to be a part of this 36-hour online fundraising event that raises much-needed money to continue our mission of increasing reading skills in Georgetown County. Our vision is our long-term plan, to interrupt the cycle of poverty by providing opportunities for children to develop advanced literacy skills that will improve their academic performance and increase long-term career prospects. Childhood literacy affects each one of us. Research shows a child who cannot read proficiently by fourth grade has a higher risk of not graduating high school. In South Carolina, 52% of low-income fourth graders cannot read at a basic level. Once grown, an adult who cannot read well lacks one of the most basic skills needed for everything from getting and maintaining employment to reading directions or even a medical prescription. In fact, low literacy costs us $73 million per year in direct health care costs. We have an opportunity to change this. Freedom Readers exists to increase reading skills in low-income communities. And with your help, we will reach more scholars in more neighborhoods. We will be able to send more books home so that more children will have an opportunity to read books they love. We will continue to pair our scholars with mentors who care about their success and believe in their future. We will be able to consistently provide opportunities for one-on-one -on -one tutoring and public speaking. So confidence soars in the classroom, at home, and throughout communities right here in Georgetown County. Freedom Readers is celebrating 11 years this month, and it is because of the people who make our organization great. Let's get to meet some of those people right now. Joining me today is three of our Freedom Reader scholars, the Bond family and their mom, Leona. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting us. Well, first of all, tell me how long you guys have been involved with If I remember correctly, it's been about three years. Three years. And you have three boys in the program. Three right? boys. The little girls are great. <laughs> tell me about some of the changes you've seen in your boys since they've been part of our program. Um, well, uh, the oldest son was not a fan of reading at first, but he's doing a whole lot better. Uh, Mason definitely loves reading and is a, a character. And DL has picked up on lots of side words, and he is not having a good day right now. <laughs> but um, he definitely is enjoying the art of learning to read. And this is in a very critical stage for learning to read. Um, Ian in third grade, third grade. which is uh, a big year for yep. reading. Mason, first grade? First grade. And Diedrich is in? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. And they're all soaring with their Freedom Readers tutors? Yes, I think they are. Um, DL absolutely loves having that individual attention. I can secretly say that I really like the virtual option better. <laughs> um, he definitely uh, gets just some one-on-one -on -one attention from his tutor. And I think you bring up a great point because you're an educator yourself, yes. and so you know the importance of the one-on-one the -on -one attention that children need when learning any skill, but especially reading. Yes, definitely. Uh, and the tutor that he has, she does a remarkable job with connecting with him. Um, the older boys have a male tutor, which doesn't make a difference, but they can talk about like sports and things like that. Um, but they absolutely have a good time, and he loves it when it's two o'clock and it's time for him to log on. That's wonderful. That's just what we like to hear. Ian, I want to ask you, since you were already joining in, you just had to find the right uh, book series. Tell me, what's your favorite thing to read? Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, a popular book series. How many books have you read? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I haven't not completed any. Three? Have you read so many you've forgotten? He that skips series? around. So he'll read a piece of one and then he'll go to the next one and read a piece of the next one, yeah. Which is great because a love of reading is you have to love what you're reading, right? So yes, you're looking for that great storyline? Yes, I have not completely any of my books. <laughs> Tell me what your favorite part of being a Freedom Reader Scholar is. Uh, that I don't know. I just enjoy singing a lot. You enjoy? Singing. Singing with your tutor? Uh, no, I just enjoy singing for people. 
seeing it for people. Do you have a song you would like to share with us? Oh! Am I opening up a can of worms? Yes! Oh, no! Are you yes. ready or do you need a minute to think about uh, it? I am ready. Okay, well, why don't you step forward a little bit? Oh, no. Share your talents with us. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and I fly away. I believe I can talk. You see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. You have a wonderful voice. Thank you for performing that on the spot for us. That was wonderful. Okay, Mason, why don't you step up? Tell me, what's your favorite thing to read? Uh, Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man. Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man? What's your favorite part of being a Freedom Reader Scholar? I get to read a lot of books. Yeah? You like reading all the books? Yes! And what about your tutor? How do you like, um, what do you like most about your tutor? That gets me to read books. <laughs> gets you to read books. <laughs> do you yeah. do you like getting your delivery of books and seeing all the different all the different titles you get? Yes. So what would you like to share with all the uh, the Freedom Readers audience? Oh, oh, oh. Ian shared a song. Do you have something to share? I mean, I sing a little bit too. Well, please share it with oh, us. Okay. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I believe it every night and day. I believe I can float away. I believe I can do. See me running through that open door. I think about it every night and day. I believe I can float away. I believe I can Good job, Mason. That was wonderful. Yes, Leona, you have a family of singers here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I love most about this is the confidence. Right. To step right. up with no prep. No problem. And to share that with the world. Thank you so much. All right, any other parting words for, for Palmetto Giving Day? Some people to donate. Oh yeah, donate. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead. Just donate. Donate. All your clothes, everything you have. <laughs> donate. <laughs> thank you for being part of the Freedom Readers family, and thank you for sharing your boys with us. Thank you. Joining me now is another Freedom Readers scholar, Shalay Cordell. Thank you for being here. And tell me, how long have you been involved in Freedom Readers? Three years. Three years. And what is your favorite part of being a Freedom Reader scholar? Books. Yeah. What are some of your favorite books? Um, I like cheerleading books and fairy tales. And fairy tales? What grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade? And have you enjoyed meeting with your tutors since you've been a Freedom Reader Scholar? Mm -hmm. Yeah? What's your favorite part of meeting with your tutors? Um, my favorite part when they That's an important part. Huh? I want to talk a little bit about your winning dance video. Uh, Chalet and two of her friends put together a boogie competition dance video for us and they won for our big books and boogie uh, competition this year. So tell me, where did you guys get the inspiration for your video? Well, my grandma had thought about it and so she said, um, since they don't have it on the um, TikTok app, we have YouTube, then they did record it, the song, then we dance it. And who made up the dance? How did you think of the dance moves? Well, um, I made it up, then they, then my Kayla had made some of it up, too. Uh-huh. And how long, how much practicing did it take for you guys to get your final video done? Two days. Two days? Oh my gosh, that was a pretty good video. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, Grandma, tell us about some of the changes you've seen in Chile since she's been a Freedom Reader. Um, not just Chile, the other two dancers, which are her cousins, 
they've all been in Freedom Reads for three years, as she said. I've seen the comprehension improve. I've seen their decoding skills grow. And what I like most of all is their, um, when they're talking about their books, that help with their public speaking. So I've seen that public speaking um, improve. And readers make leaders. Freedom Readers give that foundation that the young people actually need to become good readers and become good leaders. And that's why I really like Freedom Readers. What would you say to somebody watching who maybe has not heard of Freedom Readers, but they're just tuning in on Palmetto Giving Day? It is a great program. It helps to build reading skills. It helps to build leaders. So we ask that you please support Freedom Readers so that we can continue, so that they can continue to do the great work that they're doing with our young people. Wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Thank you. Joining me now is Lily Johnson, a Freedom Reader supporter and a tutor here at Arnett in Georgetown County. Thank you for being here. It's good to be here. Thank well, tell you. me first, how did you hear about Freedom Readers? Well, actually, I'm a member of Arnett, so I am AME and knowing Sandy. Mm -hmm. And when the program was first introduced, I knew that that was something that I wanted to do. And why? I wanted to do it because it gave me a connection with the children and it's an extension of the school program and it's after school. It's an incentive for them to come because we offer them certain things that they enjoy. They love being there and plus it gives the mothers an opportunity to do something else. <laughs> but they don't look at us as babysitters down. Oh no, <laughs> your job is too important as a That's tutor. That's right. <laughs> What is your favorite part of being a tutor? What keeps you coming back? I like the public speaking. And as I watch the Bonds family, especially with Eon, I've seen how he has grown through this program. Because when I first met him, even though I was not his tutor, he seemed to be shy, but there was no shyness about him today. And they don't get that opportunity in school now as when I was growing up, it was a million years ago. <laughs> so it gives them an opportunity to stand before a group of people and actually talk with them. At first, they usually are not comfortable, but if you encourage them and they continue to do it and they see that they can do it with that encouragement, it works out. But that's one avenue that I think is a real benefit to our children. And I, I, that's one thing that I feel like gets glazed over a lot with Freedom Readers. We talk about reading and we talk about books, but a lot of times we leave out that the confidence that is instilled in the scholars and learning to speak in front of people, which is a, another lifelong skill that they need. It is, and even as adults, we feel uncomfortable when we have to get in front of a group of people yes. and talk. And we try to encourage them and let them know that because they don't feel quite comfortable, that's okay. Because sometimes it's not okay with us either. When we've got to, we have apprehension sometimes. And yes. It's standing for the group. Tell me, how long have you been a tutor? <laughs> how old is the program? <laughs> oh, about eight, nine, ten years. Okay. Honestly, I don't recall how long. But you've seen, you've been around long enough to see kids come through the program and then go on to middle school, go on to high school. Tell me about what you've seen from our Freedom Reader scholars who have gone on, graduated our program, and then gone on to, the, to their um, higher level of study. But not only that, while they are in middle school or high school, some of them return not only as tutors, but actually as assistants. So that's another reason we know that this is an important program mm -hmm. um, for the children as well as the parents because they know they can explore other avenues. And it's wonderful that they're coming back to the program that's right. with the knowledge that they gain. And that's an added plus for the program. It speaks well for Freedom Readers. What would Thanks you to Tracy. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> Dr. Bailey. We're all here because of her, <laughs> yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> Tell me what you would say to somebody watching on Palmetto Giving Day who has not heard of our organization. I would encourage them as a result of not only Giving Day, but when they look at any of these videos and they see the excitement that we express through the program, hopefully that, that will generate some excitement for them and they will be able to, uh, want to be able to um, become involved because they know it's, it's sharing their talent, 
and it grows from there. And the tooth grows with it as well. And we were lucky the, the Bonds family. the children are so loving. <laughs> yes, the Bonds family kicked us off yes. today. So. And I thought that was wonderful and so natural. Yes, they did wonderful. Well, thank you for jo joining us today and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here, too. Joining me now are Freedom Reader Scholars Zaria and Mackenzie Davis. They are sisters, and they've been a part of our program here in Georgetown for many years. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Well, Zaria, let's start with you. You are in eighth grade now, but you started Freedom Readers when you were in kindergarten. Yes, ma'am. What was your favorite part of the program? The reading part. The reading part. I love reading. What are some of your favorite books to read? Um, fiction. I love fiction books. And you're in eighth grade now, so you are in our AP program. Yes, ma'am. Tell me how that works. Well, we have Miss Erica Scott, and she, we all were after the after the Thursday class, we come in and we talk about how school is, and then we all have a book that we all read together, and we're all talking about it. Yeah. And what book is that? Well, the book we did read last year was The Hate You Okay. And did you like reading it with a group of people and then having the opportunity to discuss it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Tell me what your what your favorite part of the one-on-one -on -one Freedom Readers tutoring was when you were growing up. Maybe you were a bit younger in elementary school. It was, well, you got one-on-one -on -one help and you got to group talk to somebody. Do you feel like being a Freedom Reader Scholar helped get you to the AP portion now and you're taking some high school classes in eighth grade? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. We're really proud of you. That is, you. that is something to be proud of. Well, Mackenzie, you are in third grade? Yes, ma'am. And what's your favorite part of being a Freedom Reader Scholar? Um, getting to um, talk about my book in front of the, um, the other people. So getting to present what you've read in your book? What are some of your favorite books to read? Fiction books and chapter books. What kind of themes do you like to read? Some like that uh, and some with unicorns. Unicorns? Mm -hmm. And you brought a book to share with us today, a little portion of it? Okay, tell us about your book. So, this book is about a girl who has a white mom and a black dad. and. She has to go from one house to the other house. Um, so they're basically having, like, they both have, um, can't think of the word, but they both can take care of her. Like, one week she goes to her mom, and then the next week she goes to her dad. Okay, and you want to share a little portion of the book with us? Okay, go ahead. Plunk, plink, ripple, rumble, tinkle, twinkle, boomble. I know that's not an actual word, but it, it, but it is a real sound. I can create any musical combination of sounds on my piano. That's my superpower. I sit hands perched with thirsty fingers as I get ready to play. I work hard at it, always trying to find the right melodies and harmonies. The upstairs and the downstairs scales that rise and fall. The three and four finger chords that stump. The fingernail delicate tip tones up and down the keyboard. Each touch a new sound. White keys, black key, keys at one time. Chords all together. Two keys make a different sound and three play together. Four or five mashed at the same time is even better. I can do not nine keys, even ten to make a Board. But to be honest, that sounds weird. Each combination at the piano is different. Bass, 
treble, major tones, minor wails, bass like a se celebration, treble like tears, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, up, 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 down, down, down. Har harmony, melody, chords, scales, the black keys play sad sounds, like somebody crying. The white keys sometimes laugh. Using only my fingers, I can make the black and white keys dance together and do whatever I want. The, when I play the piano, I rock. It would be nice if the rest of my life came together like some kind of magical musical symphony, but no, nah, not you. Wonderful child. Tell us the title of your book. Blended by Sharon M. Draper. And that's a book you're enjoying reading right now? Currently yeah. reading? Well, we thank you guys for being Freedom Reader Scholars, and it sounds like you guys are the reason this program is so successful. Seeing your successes in school and your successes reading the book makes us so happy. Joining me now is another Freedom Reader supporter, Zenobia. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Well, tell me about how you first heard about the program. Oh, Sandy Jackson. <laughs> so the fabulous Sandy Jackson, many years ago, oh my God, it's got to be, it's got to be 10 years, or close to 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, she was the one who came to another organization that we were both involved in at the time and said, this is a really good program, and I think that we should bring it to Georgetown. She was in Ori County, Tracy was in Ori County at the time, mm -hmm. where Freedom Readers was. Mm -hmm. And so she said, this is really important for our community. And so we brought Freedom Readers, or Freedom Readers was brought to Georgetown through that organization. But Sandy Jackson was the impetus for that company, for that happening. And so you've been involved with the Georgetown branch of Freedom Readers since the since inception. Since the beginning, then. absolutely, since the beginning. Tell me about some of the positive impacts you've seen in uh, Georgetown since Freedom Readers was brought here. Um, I think that, number one, there was the support of, a, of our homegirl. So um, it was very important for us, or for me, and I'm being biased, um, to support Tracy in her efforts to bring a literacy program to Georgetown because we all grew up in this community, uh, we all grew up in the culture, and so every culture and every community has its own sensitivities, and so she knew and understood that about the kids. And so for people uh, who know you and are familiar with the uh, their community to come back and to give of their talents and of themselves, was important for us to, um, and for me to support. So um, that's a positive. I think for, uh, I think the fact that Freedom Readers in Georgetown is um, a kind of um, shepherded through many of the churches in our area mm -hmm. was an important thing because even if a child is not a member of a church, they are familiar with that place of worship. So mm -hmm. it was a comfortable space for many of our young people to be in. So that was a positive thing. And anything that inspires our kids to read is important. And not just reading um, for the sake of uh, getting a good read, but reading for the enjoyment right. of reading. And also the other things that they focus on, public speaking and all that kind of stuff. All of those things are important for our kids. So you've seen uh, only positive impacts from the Freedom Readers program here? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Tell me about some of the kids you've seen come through the program and go on to the, um, the older grades. Are you seeing them excel because they were a Freedom Reader Scholar? I think so, and I also see them being ambassadors for the program and being proud of the fact that they were able to go through a program. So they have this sense of, um, they have this sense of pride. And I love it when they're, they see people like, when they see Sandy, or they see Miss Betty, or they see my Aunt Norma, they are just so happy and they want all their friends to know that this was their tutor or they were a scholar at a particular church or whatever. So they carry that stuff with them even afterwards. There's that sense of pride and connect and connection. Yeah. And some of them have even supported Freedom Readers, you know, as, as they got older, they've come back and supported Freedom Readers. I like the emphasis on community because Absolutely. that's such an important part of Freedom Readers. And another part that I feel like we haven't touched on yet is the um, parent parental involvement. Yes. This isn't a program where you just send your child and come pick them up after an hour. The parents Correct. have to be invested. 
Well, anything that you do for young people in any community, there has to be parental um, investment. It just doesn't happen as well if you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about working with people who know the community so well is that it's not like you're introducing yourself to people that you don't know. Right. But even if you don't know that particular person's parent, you know the grandparent, you know the yeah. aunt, you know the uncle, you know a family friend, you know somebody that connects you to that child and connects you to that family. And so it's a little bit easier than just saying, hi, my name is you know, strange lady from someplace yeah. <laughs> coming and we want to, you know, we want to teach your kids. Right. Everybody knows everybody right. and to stay connected, is, it, it's a little easier that way. Mm -hmm. Your message on Palmetto Giving Day to people who may not be as familiar with Freedom Readers here at Georgetown County. It is an awesome program. Open up your wallets <laughs> and give, give, give generously, okay? As generously as you can because Freedom Readers is one of those programs that truly, truly benefits the kids of Georgetown County. Dollar bills, y'all. Dollar bills. <laughs> I can't say it any better. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. All right. <laughs>